When you see an action movie, you watch a kind of filmmaking that is not only unpredictable, but often genuinely dangerous. The staging of action sequences requires the skills of a team of specialists who can carry out lethal tasks without getting a scratch. You can't make action pictures without stuntmen. War films, for instance, depend on them. To give you an example, let's imagine a sequence from one of those typical commando movies that were so popular in the 50s. Let's say a group of saboteurs have been landed on the coast behind enemy lines. Their impossible mission? To blow up the power lines and escape the enemy patrols. So the stuntmen live to die another day. Why do they do this kind of work? How do they accomplish their stunts or gags as they call them? That's what this film is all about. During his career, stunt coordinator Bob Woodham has died for a living countless times. His films include Fahrenheit 451, Adam's Woman, the James Bond thriller, You Only Live Twice. He heads a team of stuntmen who are rarely out of work. Grant Page, four years in the commandos, skydiver and rope specialist. Graham Matrick, 12 years experience as a stunt rider. Herbie Nelson, chief safety man, a veteran of the team. His films include Cleopatra and the Guns of Navarro. The youngest is Warren Campbell, He's been with the team less than a year. He drifted into stunt work after a tour of duty in Vietnam. His experience came in useful during the filming of the war sequences you've just seen. Most war films are made with the cooperation of the Army. Apart from supplying armored personnel carriers and troops, the Army engineers provide some very realistic explosions. pounds of plastic explosive, two gallons of petrol make a stimulating bang, and a long lens on the camera make the stuntmen appear closer to the explosion than they really are. When the script calls for a man to be literally blasted into the air, a trampoline is often used. Here it's concealed from the camera by a mound of earth. A small satchel of flash powder mixed with aluminum powder is placed in a concave metal plate which will direct the blast into the right area.
As the stuntman hits the trampoline, the charge is detonated electrically, and he somersaults through the explosion, creating the desired effect. Subsequent 100-foot depth fall and the rope slides were filmed under difficult conditions at a cliff known as the Gap. On August 20th, 1857, HMS Dunbar was wrecked here with the loss of 121 lives. The macabre reputation of the place has been enhanced over the years by a number of people who have committed suicide by jumping off the cliff. The police rescue squad pulls 12 bodies a year off the rocks or out of the treacherous waters around this area. Bob Woodham has no plans to become a statistic. He will jump 100 feet onto a carefully prepared rig made up of 500 cardboard boxes and 14 mattresses. The air trapped in the boxes will cushion his fall, provided, of course, that the boxes don't get wet from the flying spray. The wind has increased considerably since the start of the filming, and one big wave could ruin everything. Bob keeps an eye on his safety men as they lash the boxes together with rope, position the mattresses. The architecture of the rig has to be perfect. There's no room for error because Bob will hit it at a speed in excess of 70 miles per hour. The rig nears completion. Bob protects the most vulnerable parts of his body with special pads. finalizes the sequence of events with the director. Bob, how are you going to set about this? Oh, when you roll cameras, I'll count two, which will give you enough time for your high speed to get going. I'll get to the edge, and then I'll go. And land in the rig, I hope. I'm a bit worried about the wind. There's a bit of updraft, and wind's very dodgy. I don't really know. Are you scared? Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared. Is this the highest fall you've ever done? Oh, it's as high as any, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a high fall. Okay, let's go. The top corner of the rig a little off course due to a gust of wind. But the stuntman's twin goals are achieved. Survival and a good shot. The boxes are burned to make way for the next stunt. A simulated free fall. Sometimes called the flying fox. Grand Page has been doing it on and off for 10 years. Well, the, the simulated free fall is, is done as a complete drop. It's almost as if you've got no braking at all in the initial part. And all braking is done by friction on the rope by your brakeman down below. To prepare the rope for this stunt, a preliminary jump is necessary at a slow speed to take the kinks out of it. The rope actually goes straight through a carabiner with one twist on the side. This gives a completely free run until there's tension on the bottom side of the rope. And as soon as there's tension, this creates friction around the carabiner. And the size of the carabiner is important, the size of the rope. 
and the type of the rope is also very important because it must give the right amount of friction and from this and only from experience you can judge how fast your braking will be because if you're coming in at about 30 maybe 35 miles an hour and you don't judge properly you can be, be caught too high and this will give a twist in the rope which will lock against the carabiner and you'll break it back quite easily.